Today I'm working on this canvas that I previously started. I used a lot of little bits and pieces of paint and some colors that I don't even like. So it's kind of ugly right now, but I'm going to continue building up on this and um, making some more marks and textures and patterns. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this roller that is a children's play roller um, from the kids section of the art store. It's like a brayer with some patterns on. It's made out of foam and I'm going to charge it up like you would a brayer. Just using white paint here to bring some life back into this. You could use fluid paint for this as well, it might actually be easier. And now I'm just going to roll this randomly. The next thing I'm going to use is this Martha Stewart sponge and put some stamp circles on. So again, I'm going to load up my stamp. Sometimes if you have a lot extra on here, you can put it off on a paper first. So again, randomly, I'm just going to put some circles. I do love circles. Get a little more paint on here. So at this point, I am not concerned at all about where this is going. And I'm painting this, sorry about the wiggle jiggle. I'm painting this just raised up on the floor on a container. Here I am going to use a piece of packing waste that has a couple of circles in this kind of foam material and I'm going to use it as a stamp. So again, I'm gonna load it up with my white paint and try not to have too much excess on it. Again, you can stamp this off on the side on a piece of paper. So I'm just randomly going to put this pattern again around the canvas. I really do like working with a large canvas laying down to do this type of work and be, being able to walk all the way around the canvas opposed to having it up on an easel or my painting wall. So just randomly making pattern and marks, and of course a lot of this will be covered up, but that is when you get all the nice happy accidents um, that you couldn't have planned. So pattern is one of the elements of design, and often I add it in to my paintings later, but this painting needed some help before I could really start responding to it. So just adding a bunch of pattern in, building up some more optical texture to get going. Don't overthink this. Um, it doesn't matter how much you put on. Next I'm going to try a stencil. I picked this up at the dollar store. And I'm just going to tape it down so it doesn't move around on me with a little bit of low-tack painter's tape. I'm going to use a little sponge to just sponge in, hoping not to get uh, paint underneath it. So I find a sponge often works better for this technique. Or you can use also a stencil brush 
inexpensive makeup sponges work excellent. I'm using one of these Martha Stewart uh, round circle sponges, um, which maybe isn't the best choice, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, so that turned out pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to try this stencil and it's a 12 by 12 stencil. It has a fairly large pattern on it. Again, I'm going to secure it with a little bit of tape so it doesn't move. You want to think about scale of your patterns when you're doing this. Uh, the bigger the canvas, kind of the bigger the pattern, you may want to choose. Here I'm using a foam roller to just, oops. Well, let's move it. I don't like to paint in a whole stencil anyway, so it's nice to have a little bit more random. I don't want to end up with a bunch of squares and make it look like a tile on my painting. The foam roller works great, uh, especially on bigger uh, stencils. You can get a lot done in a little bit of time. It would have probably worked on the number stencil as well. So just randomly placing pattern over the whole painting, trying to cover up some of the ugliness and develop a new layer. I'm going to try a smaller stencil now. This is a this is a six by six inch stencil with a different pattern. Um, when I pick my patterns, I try and think of things that feel right and relate to each other, and also variety. So this one has a lot of, of smaller marks in it, um, but I feel like it does relate to the other stencil I used. And again, using the foam roller is a fast and easy way to get through the stencil. I'm going to put a layer of transparent paint on of quinacridone nickel azo gold. So that is going to tone the canvas. If you've used a bunch of colors that aren't necessarily harmonious, it's going to bring them all together when you use a transparent glazing coat. So I've just watered this down to use it and it will shift all of the colors because it's transparent and of course it's going to make the white paint I just put on more gold but it will shift the other colors to blend so if you have used a palette that isn't really singing this is a really good way to fix it is just put a transparent layer over So this certainly looks more interesting to my eye now than it did before. And I have much more interest and something to respond to on this canvas. So whether it's going to turn into a abstract figurative painting, a non-objective abstract, I'm not sure at this point, but I think it will be fun to explore going forward. So I hope that this gave you some inspiration and that you will try some of these ideas yourself. Thanks for watching.